My name is Craig Weish with Visible Assets and I'm going to show you in two demonstrations here how Ruby tags work in steel and water environments. So what we have here is a Ruby tag that has been tuned for steel and placed directly on the surface of this section of steel I-beam. And we're going to read this tag using this Ranger antenna uh, and show how this works. So if we can go ahead and start the antenna. You hear that dinging sound in the background. That's the sound of successful reads from the antenna to the tag. So I'm going to start to walk away from the antenna. And you'll see that out here uh, at about seven or eight feet in this tag orientation, uh, we start to experience misreads uh, experimentally up around, uh, up around eight feet with this antenna tag uh, combination. Um, you notice that I get reads even if the tag is facing away uh, from the antenna, uh, because the ruby signals just pass straight through the steel. If I change the orientation of the tag, I can get considerable additional range. So here I am out at about, uh, at about 18, 20 feet. So for the second part of the demonstration, we have the same ruby tag on the section of steel I-beam. In this case, the tag and the I-beam are submerged in water. And we'll show that ruby signals pass through water, completely unaffected by water, even when uh, it's on the presence of, of, of steel, like now. So if we can go ahead and start the antenna again. You hear again the dinging sound in the background, the sound of successful reads. I can orient the I-beam so that the tag is facing away from the antenna, still getting reads through the water, through the steel. I'm going to go ahead and roll the cart back. And we see again right around seven, seven and a half feet, uh, we start to experience misreads in this tag antenna orientation. If I change the orientation of the tag, we get additional range out of this combination. Out to the same distance that we did when the, when the tag was not in water.